Hey gang, how everybody doing? Today we're going to be talking about the OSI model. So the OSI model, simply put, is a reference model that just shows us how data goes through the network. Since we can't actually see the ones and the zeros and can actually see an email go from the sender to the receiver, the OSI model is set up to show you from the physical layer all the way to whatever application that you're actually using, how that actually works. So we're going to go through this. It's actually seven layers. We're going to go through each one, figure out what each layer does and what protocols work at each layer. We need to know the protocols that work at every layer. A protocol is just simply rules, standards, how things actually work. And some of the protocols that work at the application layer, which is the seventh layer, the last layer of the OSI model. Whenever we're looking at the OSI model, I always want you guys to look at it from the physical to the application because that's how the exam is going to look at it. Whenever they ask you a question, what layer does blah, 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 blah happen? It's always talking about from the physical up to application. So these are a few protocols that work at the application layer. So we got FTP, file transfer protocol, how files are transferred. And like I said in the first lecture, exactly how this is, right? A lot of times it's gonna be in acronyms. It's not gonna be spelled out for you. So it'll just say FTP or POP3 or SNMP. So just make sure that once you see acronym, what does that stand for? What does it do? How does it work? And if it breaks, how do I fix it? Just to make things easier for you. Um, let's hop down to something that you're familiar with. HTTP, simply put, is how we get on the internet. So HTTP is how we get on the internet. Then HTTPS is a secure version of HTTP. So if you log into your banking website, log into Facebook, after you authenticate to something, you're going to be using HTTPS. IMAP. POP3 and SMTP all deal with email. All of those protocols deal with email. SNMP, SNMP is exactly like it says. It's an easier way or it makes it easier for administrator, administrators to actually manage their network. Telnet is how we can actually communicate through plain text, whether it's remotely or not remotely, to another device. NTP, which is network time protocol. NTP, simply put, is a way to standardize and synchronize all the devices on your actual network. So NTP is a way to standardize the time on all of the devices on your network. So if you want all your devices to be at 12 o'clock, NTP is going to be responsible for that. If you want all the devices to be at 3 p.m., whatever time it is, you want all of your devices to be synchronized at the same time, you would use NTP. Now, there are several other applications that work at the application layer or protocols that work at the application layer, but these are the main ones that we want to cover right now. Now, I'm going to skip over the presentation layer, which is the sixth layer, and we'll go to the fifth layer, which is the session layer. Then we got the transport, network, and then data link. So session layer is layer five. One of the protocols that work there is LDAP, and that's pretty much just a directory, like a yellow pages for the network. I don't even know, I don't even know if you guys, if you're younger, if you even understand the yellow pages reference, but it's just a directory. Like, okay, where's everything get? How do I look? Where's this at? Where's that at? Okay. Uh, layer four is the transport layer. So there's two different ways that we can actually transport information. We can either use TCP or UDP. Transport layer, TCP or UDP. So TCP is connection oriented. UDP is connection list. TCP, connection oriented. UDP is connection list. What does that mean? TCP cares if the receiver actually receives whatever you sent. UDP doesn't. You send it, if they get it, great. If they don't get it, oh well. So UDP is a lot faster, but it's not as reliable. TCP is really reliable. Uh, one of the examples um, that uses TCP would be email. Because if you send an email, you want to make sure that the receiver actually receives whatever you sent. UDP, an example of that would be any streaming service, Netflix, YouTube, any of that kind of stuff is going to use UDP because it just sends the information. It sends the information. If you get it, great. If not, you can reload the program or rewind or whatever you have to do. Just for speed purposes, UDP is a connectionless. It is connectionless. 
It doesn't need any acknowledgments. It doesn't need you to say, hey, man, I saw that. Everything's okay. UDP for speed, TCP for reliability. Now, layer three is the network layer. So we got a lot of stuff that works there. And the main purpose of the network layer is going to be IP addressing. There's one really important device that works at the network layer. What device is that? That device is a router. A router works at layer three. And routers use IP addresses to forward information. So the first two bullets, IPv version four and IPv version six. So that's IP addressing. And an IP address is nothing more than your logical address on the network. So we got version four and version six. We've ran out of version four IP addresses. Now we're gonna be using version six. So version four didn't allot enough IP addresses for everybody in the world. Version six stepped into place to give us more IP addresses so we didn't run out of IP addresses. But the main thing, layer three, network layer, what device works there? A router. Another name for a router is a gateway, okay? So data link layer, the device that works there is gonna be a switch. Layer three, routers work there. Layer two, switches work there. And a uh, protocol that works there is the address resolution protocol. So we got ARP works at layer two, layer three, switches. Layer two, routers. Excuse me. <laughs> layer three is routers. Layer two is switches. So excited that I'm getting tongue tied. But layer three is routers and layer two is switches. Okay. Last but not least is the physical layer. So physical layer is just the cabling and the physical stuff. All right. So where you go from the actual PC or the actual laptop to the ones and zeros. Okay. So where the ones and zeros are actually created is going to be at the physical layer. Then we go up from there. So as we can see from this little graphic, layer one to layer seven, layer uh, we got uh, seven layers, physical data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application. Before we go to the next slide, quick little question. What's a protocol that works at the application layer? What's the protocol? Any protocol, just name me one. Perfect, HTTP works at layer seven, perfect. And HTTP is just what gets us on the internet, good. All right, so the application layer, we got a couple examples of work, works there. We got DNS, HTTP, and FTP. So we went over FTP and HTTP. DNS, what is DNS? DNS stands for Domain Name Server or Domain Name Service. So DNS, the main purpose of DNS is actually resolving a website name to an IP address. So Google has an IP address, Amazon has an IP address, Facebook has an IP address. So the purpose of the DNS server is to actually resolve or figure out what IP address belongs to this website. Because like we said, networks, devices, so on and so forth, talk in numbers, in binary, in ones and zeros. So it doesn't talk in English, nothing like that. It has to figure out what IP address is actually assigned to a website. And the reason that came out is because it's easier to remember google.com, facebook.com, amazon.com, espn.com, as opposed to the IP address that is correlated or attached to that website. Now layer six, the presentation layer. So layer six is like it says, is just how it's presented, how it looks to you on the website or whatever application you're actually using. Some examples, MPEG, GIFs, or uh, JPEGs. So we know GIFs are short little pictures where it has a repetition motion. It just kind of keeps on doing the same thing. MPEG can just be a movie, so on and so forth. Then JPEG can be a picture. So main purpose of the presentation, how things look and how things are presented to the user. It's also responsible for a big word called encryption. So encryption is a word that just means that I encrypt it, I put it in a way that the only person that can see it is a person that's attended for. So if something is encrypted and I give it to you and you have ownership or you have rights to actually see it, you can see it. But if anybody else comes to try and look at it, peek over your shoulder, they won't be able to see it, okay? So encryption just puts it into a format, into a language that only the sender and the proper receivers can actually see it and understand it. Layer five is the session layer. It's the easiest one to really remember. The main purpose of the session layer is to open 
and close and manage a connection. All right, so a session while we're talking, while we're sending information, while we're actually connected in a network, layer five is responsible for initiating, ending, and managing that connection. We talked about this, the transport layer, just like it says, is responsible for transporting information. So we got UDP and TCP. We went over this already, so quick quiz, what's the difference between UDP and TCP. Perfect. One is connection oriented, the other is connectionless. So UDP is connectionless. TCP is connection oriented. So UDP cares, okay, if you have speed. TCP cares if you actually get whatever you wanted to get. TCP a lot more reliable, UDP a lot faster but not as reliable. It'll try its best to get the information to you, but if you don't get it, oh well, TCP wants to make sure that you get the information. Layer three, the network layer responsible for IP addressing and routers work at this layer. And routers use IP addresses to forward the information. Okay, I have the information here. Where do I send the information next? They use IP addresses to figure that out. Okay, it must go over to this IP address. It must go over to that IP address. Routers use IP addresses for, for the information and they work at layer three. Layer two. So layer two is where switches work at. All right, so switches are inside of your LAN, then routers is what gets you outside of your LAN and onto your WAN. Routers use IP addresses to forward information. MAC addresses are what switches use to actually forward information to the next destination, okay? So a MAC address Long story short, it's just the physical address of a device. So your IP address is your logical address on the network. Your MAC address is your physical address on the actual network. So we got a MAC address and switches use MAC addresses to forward information. Last but not least, we have the physical layer. So this is where we go from the physical portion into the world, into the actual network and actually turn from me typing stuff into ones and zeros and actually turn it into binary. Then we go from layer one, then we shoot up. Just remember on the actual test, the physical layer, the physical layer is always number one. No matter how you look at it, no matter how the question is posed to you, the first layer is always the physical layer, no matter what. All right, so if it asks you what layer, what's layer three? What layer is that? Network, perfect. If it asks you what's uh, layer five? Perfect session. Just remember, it's always from bottom to top when they pose you the questions.